Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at another PlayStation 5 which I purchased off eBay for £210. This was originally up for £230 and I sent the seller a £180 best offer and the seller come back with a £220 best offer. I sent another offer for £200, he sent one and said well you stretch to £210 and I'll basically sell it to you. So I ummed and ahed a little bit, decided that instead of steak I was going to eat rice and here we are. So we've managed to pick this up for £210, it does come boxed, it comes with a controller, all of the cables, so it's a pretty good deal really, it's not a bad deal at all, but apparently it doesn't turn on. So we're going to try and fix it, hopefully make some money. The last one that I did that I bought off eBay went really really well. I have taken a little sneak peek inside this and the warranty sticker is intact, or at least I think it is. So I bought one a few weeks ago and the warranty sticker had been removed without the void if removed thing uh, appearing and it looked fine, but then when I actually removed it there was no screw underneath, so I've been lied to. Hopefully that's not the case this time, but if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content then I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications and give the video an early thumbs up so it looks like I'm more popular than I actually am. And if you want to support me, if you like these type of videos or you find any kind of use from them, then you can head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account to Twitch and subscribing to me over there. And it's absolutely free if you've got Amazon Prime, but it does massively, massively help out the channel. It allows me to keep buying stuff like this and it's now Wednesday and Sunday gone, I spent £730 on eBay on different consoles. There's a lot of content coming and it's very, very expensive. So with that being said, let's get into this repair. Right, so we've got the PS5. And basically, this apparently has got no power, but we're going to do what we always do and just give it a quick test and just see if we can figure out roughly what's going on with it. So I'm going to press the power button. Okay, it's a two second then off. Let's take a look at the description and make sure it matches up with that. And while I'm here, I might as well shill Discord. So if you look in the video description, you'll see a link to Discord. Almost a thousand members on Discord right now, completely free to use. And if you want any help with fixing electronics or just chatting in general, then you're more than welcome to join the Discord. There's an invite link in the video description. Recorded.live forward slash Discord. And that will take you straight to the invite page, if you're like this look. Boom. 801 members. Come on, make it 802. Okay, so if we go to my purchase history, this is what I mean by... <laughs> there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of things that I've bought over the past few days. It's pretty expensive. And, uh, yeah, we've got some nice content coming, as you can see. We're not going to fix batteries, don't worry. Uh, but yeah, a lot of content coming. Hopefully, some interesting stuff to come in the next few weeks. But here is the PS5. So it doesn't come with the outer box, but I have got an outer box which I can use on it, which is absolutely fine. So this is the images. PS5 is taking a nap by the look of it. I've actually got, uh, I think, one of these white boxes as well. I'm pretty sure I have, because uh, this one's ripped. But, as you can see, £210, £6.46 postage, very reasonable postage, very reasonable indeed. And it says, Sony PS5 Digital Edition console white, comes with cable controller and stand, and console also has original white box. No repairs attempted, this was purchased like this. The fault is, it powers on and then it's straight off. Will need to be fixed. Please only buy if you agree with the above. So, yeah, like I said, I've already looked at this and the warranty sticker appears intact. So it seems genuine so far. So a little spoiler, I did kind of scratch the inside a little bit because this case is really, really tight. There we go. That got it. So I did scratch the uh, inside, so I'll probably change this top because, yeah, if I resell this, I don't think the person who buys it is going to want scratches. My fault, I've got a spare one, it's fine. So like I said, I was scammed on one a few weeks ago and that's why I've got spare parts. So let's take a look. So the first thing I'm going to have a look at is 
did we get a free SSD? One day I'm going to get one where I get a free SSD. But this is the furthest I've got is taking that off there. I didn't, keep, didn't even take that off. So that appears intact. So that's all good. But are we going to get a free SSD? I certainly hope so. That would be awesome. But it's doubtful. I don't think anyone's silly enough to do that, to be honest. But you never know. Let's have a look. Okay, that's fairly tight, so I don't think that's ever been off. Ah, nope. Never mind. Well, you never know. One day, one day we're going to get one. So I'm going to get this apart. There's a few things what it could be. I don't think it's going to be the power supply. That is very, very, very doubtful indeed. So I don't think it's going to be the power supply because it is attempting to turn on. So it's very unlikely to be that. It still could be that. But I've never come across it yet where the power supply is at fault when we've got a two second blue light of death. The most common thing which I'm coming across at the minute is a shorty capacitor on the APU side of the board and it seems really really common there's a bank of four capacitors whoops there's a bank of four capacitors and the third one across that seems very very clean this has barely had any use barely any use that is virtually dust free that's scary to think if I'm being honest, that is scary to think because if these are dying with that little use, yeah, not good, Sony, not good at all. But there's a bank of four capacitors, but just while I'm taking this apart a little bit, and basically on that bank of four capacitors, I believe it's a five volt line. I could be wrong, but I believe it's a five volt line, and basically the five volt line. I think one of those capacitors is the wrong value. That's what I'm kind of gathering from the fact that it's one specific capacitor what seems to be failing. So maybe they're using an inferior capacitor or you know an inferior brand or maybe a, a value which is too low. Maybe they've undervalued it a little bit when they've been doing the um, engineering and things like that. I don't know, but... Something's gone wrong because it does seem to be failing. And another thing which seems to happen is the 5 volt to 3.3 volt regulator around a marking that says F7002, which from what I can gather is something to do with the HDMI circuit. That seems to be failing as well. And you can get those, you can buy those off AliExpress. The only problem is they have gone up considerably. They're something like $30 for 5 or something. And when I first bought 10 of them, they, they were something like $4 for five. So I don't know why they've gone up so high in value. Let's void this warranty, even though them stickers are not actually valid. But yeah, that, oh yeah, that's definitely not been off. So this is what I mean, the void if remove thing that you get, you know, that, that was intact, which made me believe that. No one had actually messed. But yeah, cool. That's awesome. That is incredibly clean. So I'm going to stop waffling now and I'm going to get this thing apart. I'll fast forward through this bit because it's pretty time consuming. So I'll fast forward through this and then we'll pick it up when I'm about to take the board out. Or rather actually no, I'm not going to be taking the board out. What I'm going to be doing is testing some voltage once I've got this plate off. So I'll we'll fast forward through this bit and we'll pick it up when I'm ready. Right then, that was... Yeah, I've got cramp in my hands. <laughs> that was a little bit annoying. I, I hate taking these apart, I really do. So, like I said, I want to test some voltages because I want to see if I can get a rough idea before I go any further of what's going on. Um, there's some nice simple diagnostics that we can do on the... PS5 without taking the actual board out. So we have to take the plate out, obviously. So this plate here has to come out. And these are fairly tight. You don't want to give it too much welly, but you do want to give it a little bit of welly. There you go. So you see that just shoot up. Uh, the reason for that is because it sticks down with all of these blobs of viscous paste and things. It all, it all sticks together. And uh, yeah, that's the reason that it 
seems like it doesn't want to come up, but it does. Okay, so this is the first revision, EDM010, and yeah, this probably is going to suffer with one of those uh, signature failures that we keep seeing. So let's see what's going on, shall we? So I need to plug this back in in order to test with some voltages. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to go into voltage mode on my multimeter. There we go. So you're going to be struggling to see this. I'll try and get it. No, it's not going to let you see it. It's too dull. I will be changing to a new multimeter soon, I think. Okay, so voltages. We're going to pop one probe in a random spot for ground. And I'm going to Pop the other probe on ground just to null the lead and make sure that it is actually ground, which it is. And let's just try spraying this. Let's just see if I can get you to see it at all. Probably not, but you know, it's a very, very dull meter naturally. Yeah, it, it, you got no chance. Sorry. You got no chance. Uh, maybe a little bit. I'll try and tilt it as I'm moving along. Alright, so the first place I always check is going to be just up here, F7002. And I'll check on the right side first, see if we've got 5 volts coming in, which we have. You can just about make that out there. We have 5 volts on the other side, excellent. So there's an inductor here, we should have 3.3 volts there, and we do, that's perfectly normal so far, and somewhere here we should be getting 2 volts, there it is, 2 volts, okay, we've got 2 volts there, I don't think this chip activates until the console is turned on. We should have 5 volts up here. Whoops. There we go, 5 volts. And I believe that activates to 3.3 volts when it turns on. And it does. We've got 3.3 volts. 3.3 volts there. 3.3 volts there. Okay. Sure, at multimeter. We're going to have 12 volts there. It is perfectly normal. Yeah, okay. 12 volts over there, which is again normal. And 5.3 volts. Ooh, we've got 5.3 volts. That's probably not good. I'm going to be honest, that's probably not good. And the reason for that is because basically we're getting 5 volts down. So we're getting voltage around here. We're getting voltage all around here, which is normal. That's fine. But then down here is where we do get a signature failure. And if we're getting 5 volts when we turn it on, then the signature value isn't there, which means it's something that I probably haven't come across yet. Or haven't worked out. Because I, I, I don't fix all of these. Not, not all of them are fixable. Or not yet, at least. And there's certain scenarios where it just doesn't feel great, if that makes sense. You know, it... It seems to be a signature failure, but a signature failure that I haven't worked out and I don't actually know the solution for. And that's the problem. I've come across a lot of issues on these so far, but I haven't come across solutions for all of them. Because, you know, we don't know everything. Not everyone knows everything. In fact, no one knows everything. There's things that I know that you don't. There's things that you know that I don't. You know. There's always something that someone knows that someone else doesn't. And unfortunately, until 
sort of time as we get schematics for these. Yeah, <laughs> we uh, we're not going to know everything, are we? But never mind. Uh, there's one place I didn't check, and that's around the safe bridge, just here. So let's check that. Let's just see if we get 1.1 volts down here. Well, I would if I turned my multimeter back on. And it might help if I plugged it back in again. I keep forgetting to do that. Yeah, we get 1.1 volts. So the 1.1 volt line is there. Uh, is the RAM turning on? Yeah, 1.4 volts. So it does attempt to turn on with the RAM. Or rather, the RAM does attempt to turn on. Yeah. So we've got a 1.4 volt line. We've got a 1.1 volt line. We've got a 5 volt, 3.3, 12 volt, 2 volt. Everything seems fine so far, doesn't it? But it's just not turning on. It is weird. So we've got absolutely everything so far that we're supposed to have. So unless I see something on the other side, this might be a pretty quick determination of being an issue that I can't solve. Unfortunately. So... Yeah, the board looks incredibly clean, that's the problem. Hmm. It looks incredibly clean. Alright, well, let's get the housing out of the way. And then I'll pop under the microscope so I can do some more checks. Right, so I'm going to start off around here. This is the HDMI encoder. And even though it looks clean, it could technically be bad. And the HDMI encoder is known to cause a two second plot so let's just have a look at this here so i'm going to go into continuity mode here and i'm just going to check around here for shorts so it is known to cause a blue light of death sometimes But this time we're not getting any shorts around there, so I doubt very much it's going to be that. We could attempt to change that just on the off chance, but I want to do some more checks first. So let's just check around here. Uh, I'm not finding any shorts, so I'm just going to scan around the board, I think, and just see if I can find any shorty components at all. Anything that could potentially be a problem. No, there's no shorts so far. Okay, we've got the safe bridge here. Uh, this Wimbon chip, this is a, it's basically a BIOS chip. This Wimbon chip is known to cause no power, from what I've found. And it is replaceable. So even though it's a BIOS chip, it is replaceable. Uh, actually, no, there's not, there's not going to be anything about what's causing it here, because F5401 and F5402 are the disk drive fuses. So we can ignore that section. This, I believe, is some sort of audio controller uh, nope still nothing okay I'm still finding absolutely nothing around anywhere unfortunately which can never be good
Okay, I'm not sure how to test the SSD. To be honest. So I can check for caps around here, but or rather I can check for shorts on caps. But that's pretty much all I can do. Check for shorts on the data lines. So this SSD controller here, it's got direct access to the APU, which means that if we have a short on here, it could potentially cause issues with the APU. So I'll just test those test points around there just to see if we find anything. And it's not appearing as though I am. Nope, not finding anything. Very doubtful I'm going to find anything on the SSD. So unless I actually see anything burnt. I don't think it's wise to just test random caps around there. I think it's probably just going to be a waste of time. I'm not finding anything at all to be honest. I'm almost completely I'm almost completely through the board in terms of testing components and I'm not finding much of anything. Which is not a good sign, is it? Okay, I'm really much to the other side of the board now I've worked my way all the way across this is the area I was referring to about the capacitor which seems to fail quite often yeah I'm not finding nothing at all this is some sort of Power management I see. No short showing on those test points. Yeah, I'm really not finding nothing. Well, this is going to suck. Because I've, I've made my way around the entire board. Checked everything. In terms of shorty components. So, without having schematics. This one's going to be a tough one. So let's just scan some of these areas around here for any kind of shorts. I'm going to zoom out actually just so as I can get more in focus. There we go. Don't know if that's normal. To be showing up as short, I'll check that on a good board in a second. Okay, so we're reading short on this one. Hmm, that could be powering the RAM. I don't know what this MOSFET thingy does. I'm assuming it's some sort of MOSFET. Don't know what it does. That could be powering the RAM. It's got a 12 ohm. Well, he's got 12 ohm resistance to ground. Let's have a look on a working board. Interesting. It seems to have infinite resistance to ground on this one. Hmm. It can't make heads or tails of whether... Or rather of what the resistance is. Let me have a look in diode mode. 1.159 volts. Okay, that's fairly high. That's on a working board. That's on a working board. This one's not working. And we have... Wow, 0.017. We, I think we've got an issue here. I think we might have found something here, maybe. Let's remove that chip. Because we may have found something here.
Okay, so that looks to me like some sort of a MOSFET. I'm going to pop that to one side a second. And then I'm going to check that area again in diode mode. And now we're going open line. Interesting. Alright, well let me grab a donor board. In fact, I'm actually going to pull it off my working board. But first, before I do that, I'm just going to clean and prep this area. So I'm just going to add some flux. So I'm going to take it off my working board. I will put it back on my working board. Or I'll find one that works. I've got several boards here which I can use but because I know mine works 100% I prefer to put my own on there and because it's my board I can I can take parts off and just not have to worry about damaging uh, other boards you know let's say for example I had other consoles which I purchased or something I don't have to worry about damaging them because I'm taking it off a working board so I'm not going to skew any for any future repairs I know this board works and I know if I go to power it on and it doesn't power on then it's going to be something related to what I've done recently which is going to be this particular OC okay, okay so I've got the donor component Okay, so that little blob of solder squeezing out, that's perfectly normal. The simple explanation is the solder on the pad underneath. Okay, okay, let's just clean up. There we go. And uh, let's see what the diode reading says now. 1.194. Interesting. But the question is, does it now work? So there's the component I took off this board. There's my working, well, not at the minute. <laughs> there's my working donor board. Uh, that's not a donor board, that is my board, that, that board is to my own personal console, I just, I fixed it, haven't put it back together, because I've been using it for research and testing components, testing different theories, things like that, um, over the past uh, couple of weeks. Let's see if it wants to turn on. So what I did there to find that, well, perceived problem, is just testing every single component on the board until I find something which, which I thought was abnormal and that comes down to basically just experience with fault points and things like that you know you test you can test components all day long and you can just fly through them as you saw there I was just flying through them nope that's normal 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 hang on a minute and then because that didn't seem normal to me uh, being a low impedance or, or a lower impedance than what I would expect from a well what I believe was a MOSFET then you know that led me to test it on another board and that like I said comes down to experience but I could be waffling here because it could be making absolutely no difference whatsoever to the console but let's find out ah oh, you dirty rat bastard I thought, <laughs> I thought for a second it was going to work. Oh. Alright, well, that sucks a little bit, doesn't it? Because I think we're probably out of options. I'm going to put that component I took off onto my board quickly. And I'm going to see if I get that weird reading. So the reason that I want to try and see if my board is working now with this component that I've pulled off is if my board doesn't work, now this is a risk, but if my board doesn't work and that component took something else out with it, then, you know, it's going to be a case of 
try and figure out what it took out. So let's say that was bad and it wasn't just that there is excess power in the capacitors, which I find fairly unlikely to be honest. After that amount of time of it being turned off, I find that unlikely to believe, or rather I find it hard to believe, that there was any kind of excess power in the capacitors. But let's say, for example, it was faulty and it took something else out with it, then I'm going to have to figure out what it is. But then I'm going to have to figure out what it is on two boards, not one, because it would probably take it out again. But I just want to, I want to see, I want to, I want to get confirmation on whether this is actually working. Okay, so that's back on there. So now let's just pop my board into this housing quickly. Doesn't matter that mine's a disc condition and this one's a digital. It's the same housing. It's just a different outer casing. So it doesn't make a difference that it's a different board. It's actually the same board. It's just that the digital hasn't got the components on it. That it should have for the disc edition. Let's just see if my console is working now. Because I know it was working yesterday when I tested it. Let's have a look. Oh. Oh. Ho -ho. Okay. Okay. Uh oh, right. Let me just make sure that this isn't down to number one liquid metal being overspilt. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, I've got an overspill of liquid metal here. Okay, let's just check this now. I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold the board down and just make sure that it's not overheating okay that has a two second blue light of death i'm going to need to put mine back on and hope and pray that it works either that or we've got an issue with the power supply all along it is getting late i'm going to have to end the video in a minute um but i could pick back up on it in the morning you know just pause it for now Alright, so there's that component removed. I just realised I've just done all this without you even seeing. Well, never mind. This is my original component back on. Or rather it will be. Okay, there's my original component back on. Wow. So that's got to have taken something else out. Because my board is now working with my original component back on. So what has it taken out? That's really weird. I mean, really weird. Like... It's got to have taken something else out. It must be that. Okay. So, I'm a little bit confused here as to what else it could have taken out. What's on the other side of the board? So, it goes to a via, and then from there, oh, it goes around here. Oh, this might be APU related, I think.
Yeah, so it goes to these coils here. This coil here. This cap and this MOSFET, I think, by the look of it. Okay, there we go. So that's soldered back on there. Let's see what kind of diode reading we get now. 0.610. Okay, that's weird. I mean, I would expect a lower reading than normal, but that's way higher than what it was. And yeah, that's a bit weird. All right, well, let's just see if we get any kind of weird change. I'm not sure what we would, but you know, we'll see. Because I think I'm going to call it for the night anyway. Uh, maybe it could have been some excess power in the capacitors. That was just giving it a weird reading. And then, you know, the liquid metal being on my board could have caused mine to not turn on. I don't. I, I honestly don't know. I really don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It could have just been a massive coincidence. But it was an incredibly low reading. Let's have a look. No. Still not pairing on. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of stumped now. I am kind of stumped. I don't think I'm going to be able to fix this. I think that was a massive coincidence with that cap. Some excess power in the capacitor somewhere. Or, or in that was a massive coincidence with the chip. Uh, excess power in the capacitor somewhere. I would say. Um, other than that, there's no signs of anything at all. This is going to be almost impossible to diagnose. <laughs> and that sucks. But listen, I'm not going to write it off. I think I'm going to put this board to one side for a little while because... You know, we might come across something else in the near future. But yeah, I don't think I'm going to figure this out, at least for the time being. And the reason for that is, like I said, purely because the board is clean. There's no signs of any kind of damage, no signs of blown components. Apart from that one, uh, that one chip acting a little bit strange. That's probably down to excess power being inside the capacitors or something, you know. Storing excess energy in the capsule sometimes for a long period of time. <laughs> really weird. And then my board not turning on. I did have a little bit of liquid metal on there. So, yeah. Honestly, I don't know. Right there, what I do know, yawn, it is, it's 2.52am. And I am super tired. And I don't think I'm going to get this board fixed, especially not tonight. So, I'm not going to write this off. Not yet. This board is too clean to want to write off. And uh, right now I'm I'm not going to lose money. I'm not going to say that. I'm definitely not going to lose money. Um, there's parts on here which I can make a fair amount of money from. You know, I can take the safe bridge off, reboot all that, put that onto another console that needs it. Uh, the encoder, and I'd make my 200 pound back, back just off that. And then you've got the power supply, the rest of the board, etc., etc., etc. So, um, yeah, you know, I don't know, but. I don't think I want to write it off just yet, which means I don't think I want to strip it. I want to play around some more, maybe off camera, and then, you know, if I if I do come across something, then, you know, I could, I could make a video. I'm yawning a lot now. I'm tired. I'm going to go and get myself a nice uh, cup of coffee and then bed. And, yes, I do have coffee before bed. <laughs> um, yeah. It is what it is. I don't think I can fix this now, um, or at least not for the time being. But we, we, we win some, we lose some, and that's one of the risks that we take on eBay because, um, you know, we we buy these things with, you know, all of the high hopes and all of that. We're going to fix this, we're going to make some money, we're going to get a bargain, blah, blah, blah. But it's not all peaches and creams. And, uh, yeah, it's not all daisies and rainbows. Whatever you want to say, it's never pretty. Not all of the time, and, you know, a lot of the time we can't fix them. Because either they've been messed with before or because they're just very difficult to work out. This one hasn't been messed with before, but it's just pretty difficult to work out. At the minute, it's looking like an APU failure. But whether that's the case, I don't know. 
because I don't have a way to test it. So, you know, but it is looking like a major failure. <sighs> I'm going to bed. Thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you like what you see and you want to see more, if you enjoy repair content, then be sure to hit subscribe and turn on the bell notification and turn the 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 and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified whenever I release a video. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. If you've got any ideas on what I could try, then you know, more than happy to, to listen. But uh, yeah, I'm sure I can give them a try. But for now, this is an old fix. If you do feel sorry for me and you want to help me to eat tomorrow because I've got to eat rice, then you can head over to Twitch, become a subscriber, subscriber. You can become a channel member by pressing on the join button below the video. Or you can become a Patreon supporter in the video description. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Thank you all for watching. Have a good night. See you later. Bye for now.